New to jazz drumming. Seen Whiplash, maybe. Search top 10 jazz drummers or top 50 jazz drummers on Google or YouTube. Well, you probably got a list that includes Buddy Rich, a few great jazz drummers from the past, and a bunch of drummers we've all heard of who play jazz. And my advice is stop. If you're interested in real jazz drumming the way it sounds today, these articles and videos are gonna lead you astray. Am I saying they don't contain great representations of jazz drumming? Of course not. Drummers like Tony Williams, Art Blakey, and Elvin Jones routinely make these lists. And they're truly some of the greats of all time. If you're lucky, you'll also hear about Philly Joe, Max Roach, and maybe Sonny Payne. Maybe even Roy Haynes. So what am I on about? For starters, the only drummers born after 1970 these lists ever include are fusion drummers. And there's practically zero inclusion of modern players jazz drummers today actually listen to. It's a little like searching for great comedians and getting a list that includes George Carlin and Richard Pryor. But instead of Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., and Bill Burr, they have Peter Sellers, Steve Gutenberg, and Jeff Goldblum. Or you search restaurants and you hear about the really famous expensive places, but instead of the new hot places the locals go, they just have TGI Fridays and California Pizza Kitchen. And Buddy Rich, don't get me started. Pick your top 10, top 20, or top 50 jazz drummers list and Buddy's inevitably there. And Buddy had chops to be sure. But in terms of contribution to the jazz canon, compared to some of the other greats that get mentioned, he was a pretty minor player, whose biggest claim to fame was probably his repeat appearances on The Tonight Show, as Adam Neely's pointed out. Buddy Rich became a household name largely because of his association with show business. He was a frequent guest on Johnny Carson, so the general public is likely to know who he is. But as far as musicians go, his influence on modern jazz is quite minimal. But real jazz drummers don't really pay attention to Buddy. In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 jazz drummers you should check out, in addition to all those greats like Tony, Philly Joe, Blakey, Kenny Clark, Alvin, and Sonny Payne. 10 jazz drummers, jazz drummers. The Martin Picards of jazz drumming. The Sean Brocks. Instead of some of the, not really jazz, especially the way we play it now, recommendations almost all of those lists include, and especially instead of Buddy. Stay tuned. Quick disclaimer, I'm also gonna leave out a few super famous contemporary jazz drummers. People who have crossed over and been featured on Zildjian Live or VF Jams, or who are kind of Insta stars. These include some of my favorite modern jazz drummers like Marcus Gilmore, Juliana, Nate Wood, JD Beck, Mason, the other Nate Smith, etc. Many of whom I mentioned in another video, Seven Drummers Who Changed Modern Jazz Drumming Forever, link right here. Okay, on to the list. Jazz drummers, jazz drummer number one, Clarence Penn. It's hard to think of a more influential drummer on modern jazz drumming who's just under the radar than Clarence Penn, who's beloved by locals, is a great teacher and collaborator, and is on everybody's record and everybody's tour. Two of my favorite places to hear Clarence are anything with Chris Potter and anything with Dave Douglas. Like this live clip. Clarence has a style that he used pretty closely to what I'd call mainstream modern jazz drumming. And that's not a criticism at all because Clarence mostly invented that style. Here he is with Adam Rogers. And here's an early solo clip. If you want to guide people at a real life music school are way more likely to be checking out than Buddy Rich, it's Clarence. And if Clarence is a jazz drummer's jazz drummer who defined what became the mainstream, our second drummer defined a niche and sounds like nobody else until people started imitating him and is beloved by jazz insiders. Jazz drummer's jazz drummer number two. Nasheet Waits. Nasheet, son of the great Freddie Waits, might be one of the most influential jazz drummers who's never appeared on one of these top 20 lists. And it's criminal because he practically invented his own style. I first heard Nasheet listening to Mark Turner's record Dharma Days. Listen to him play over this tune called Iverson's Odyssey. <laughs> He 
He's got a way of swinging which is mechanically different from the way most jazz drummers approach it, but which is nasty as hell. Two other great places to hear Nash eat are with the great Fred Hirsch and the record Trio Plus One is one of my favorites. And with any group featuring the also criminally underrated piano player Jason Moran. I often draw parallels between Neshit, Jason, and their group, and Thelonious Monk, who was ahead of his time and underappreciated until future generations of jazz musicians put him back into the public eye. Neshit might be the Doug Stanhope of jazz drums. If you've only got three hours to check out jazz drums, spend all three hours listening to Neshit instead of any one of those modern fusion guys the top 20 lists recommend. We're all great, but you can hear them in other genres. And instead of Buddy. Jazz drum is jazz drummer number three. Bill Stewart. For this list, I'm trying to thread the needle between people who you probably wouldn't hear about on a Zildjian Live, who are also left off those stupid top 20 lists, but who, if you talk to any real jazz drummer under 99, they're like, yeah, obviously this guy's important. And number three fits the bill. You're unlikely to find Bill Stewart on any top 50 list of jazz drummers, but if you're new to jazz drumming and want to learn the real jazz drumming, listen to Bill after you listen to Art, Max, Tony, and Elvin, and before you listen to Buddy Rich or Phil Collins, for jazz that is. Bill was blowing minds on music school campuses in the early 2000s, and continues to be one of the most called real jazz drummers for real, actual jazz albums and tours. His unique style combines jazz influences like Tony Williams and Elvin Jones with funk influences from players like Clyde Stubblefield. He was also one of the most inventive brush players of the last 30 years. Now onto somebody fairly recent whom some of you may have actually seen in a Minel video, because Minel has their ear to the ground and is scooping up all the most legit artists who you haven't heard of yet, but who jazzers, especially in New York, have known of for years. Of course I'm talking about Jazz Drummer's Jazz Drummer number four, Taishan Sori. So you might have seen this video from Minel. But Taishan's been a jazz drummer's jazz drummer for almost two decades, holding down groups with artists like VJ Iyer, Dave Douglas, Steve Lehman, and Steve Coleman. It's great to see Taishan finally getting wider recognition. Before we get to number five, quick public service announcement. As I was actually writing the first half of this video, this comment came to me on my YouTube channel. Now, these drummers are some of the greatest of all time, but this illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. We only know about them because they also play non-jazz styles. And most of the jazz they do play is fusion. And there's nothing wrong with fusion. I love fusion. But these players are included on practically every top 20 or top 50 jazz drummers list, along with the likes of Buddy Rich. And there are other drummers with way more impact on modern jazz who aren't mentioned. So when people mention these greats to me in a jazz context, and they haven't heard of any of the drummers I'm talking about today, come on, bro. All I'm gonna say. Anyway, moving along to number five. Jazz drum is jazz drummer number five, Ari Honig. Ari is so well known and so well respected in legitimate jazz circles, it's hard to call him underrated. Except for the small detail of that YouTube comment I just shared. If you know Bill Bruford and Vinnie Calyuta and you think you know jazz drumming, but you haven't heard of Ari Honig, you're just wrong. Anyway, Ari is jazz royalty in New York. He's led his own groups that are given a launch pad to artists like Galad Hexelman, who in turn created some of the best records with Marcus Gilmore. And when Ari first came up with a piano player named Jean-Michel Pilk, they were doing stuff that was truly revolutionary. Like Dan Weiss and Taishan, and later Mark Juliana, Ari was obsessed with the metric side of rhythm. And Ari, like Blade, Nate Smith, and many others, also plays funk and fusion. Okay, our next drummer is one of the most underrated drummers, period. 
Jazz drummer is jazz drummer number six, Jorge Rossi. Among the many people I wanted to include on this list were people like Jeff Ballard and Jorge Rossi. I decided to include Jorge for the simple reason that Jeff Ballard, like Brian Blade, actually does make some of those top 20 and top 50 lists. And deservedly so. But everybody outside of jazz sleeps on Jorge. Just like everybody in jazz has heard of him. You can't swing a cat without hearing an amazing record this Spaniard has played on. Beginning with the great Brad Meldau Trio records. But including stints with the likes of Mark Turner, and Chris Cheek. While more technical, Jorge can't escape comparison to Bill Evans drummers like Paul Motion and Joe LaBarbera. And I tread lightly here because Mel Dog got angry at critics for comparing him to Bill Evans back in the 90s. Which is weird because, even if it's reductive, a comparison to one of the greatest piano players of the 20th century? I'm not sure I'd complain. Anyway, the next time somebody tries to tell you they know jazz drumming, ask them what their favorite Jorge Rossi song is. And if they don't know, run. By the way, mine's probably All the Things You Are from Mel Dow's Live at the Vanguard record. Another honorable mention, Rudy Royston. One of the most slept on drummers in any genre of the last 20 years. We all know Nate Smith's name, and we should because he's great. But we should also know Rudy Royston. Anyway, number seven is going to be no surprise to anybody who's listened to any jazz record or jazz vocal record between like 1995 and today. Jazz drummer's jazz drummer number seven, Greg Hutchinson. If I had to guess who's played on the broadest range of records with the biggest list of jazz artists, it would be Hutch. Ray Brown. Josh Redman. Movie soundtracks. You're just too marvelous. Too marvelous for words like glorious and glamorous. Meldow. Redman again. Aaron Goldberg. And basically everybody's tour. He's also sort of the godfather of the New York jazz scene and pretty outspoken and funny on social media. Bill Bruford, Vinny Cauyuta, both greats in any genre. But mention them in a top 50 jazz drummers list and don't bring up Hutch. By the way, I'm pretty sure Bill and Vinny would agree. Okay, jazz drummers, jazz drummer number eight, Eric Harland. Now, Eric has been on VF Jams Live. And he's played on a lot of records that aren't just jazz. And like Hutch, he's one of the most prolific artists of the last 20 years, playing with people like John Patitucci, Charles Lloyd, the SF Jazz Collective, Rosenwinkel, by the way, if somebody tells you they know jazz and they haven't heard of Rosenwinkel, run. But Eric's pretty well known, right? So how come all those top 20 or top 50 lists just sleep on him? Luckily they make it easy for me, right? Most of these slept on people are pretty well known. Which brings me to number nine, Eric's fellow Houstonian. Jazz drummer's jazz drummer number nine, Kendrick Scott. Divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled, but yet to console others. Grant that we may not so much seek to be understood. 
As I mentioned in my video from back in June, there were the 90s drummers, then there was the style Hutch and Clarence Penn kind of invented, and Blade mixed in with that and everybody kind of trying to sound like them, and then there was Eric and Kendrick. But Kendrick is his own player and created his own unique style with artists like Terence Blanchard. Mike Moreno. Lagalund. Oh, and a little known piano player named Herbie Hancock. Not to mention his own group, the Oracle. Finally, in my opinion, the most slept on player of his generation. This guy falls into a weird crack of being well enough known to insiders that nobody assumes he's underrated. He's another one who's been in Vic Firth videos, but hardly ever mentioned outside of jazz, and not even mentioned as much as he should be in jazz. He played with Terrence, he played with Walter Smith and Ambrose, he's even played with Thundercat. He's buddies with Thomas Pridgen, and if I were a jazz artist choosing a desert island drummer to play on one record, and I could only choose one drummer, it would probably be this guy. Jazz drummer's jazz drummer number 10, Justin Brown. For years, when anybody who had seen Whiplash or listened to something like the Homeland theme and asked me for examples of real jazz, I'd send them this song, Gerald Clayton's Future Reflection. Justin is like the Goldilocks drummer, just technical enough, always playing for the song, getting chops out when he needs to, and never unmusical. And Justin also plays non-jazz styles like rock, funk, soul, and fusion. In fact, here he is with Evan Marion. So if I were making a list of the top 20 jazz drummers of all time, would all these guys make the list? Well, that's a dumb question because I hate top 20 lists. Well, let's just say we should probably give the past greats their due. Tony, Kenny Clark, Philly Joe, Max, Jimmy Cobb, Connie Kay, Sonny Payne, Papa Joe, Vernell Fournier, Joe Chambers, Elvin, Dijonette, Paul Motion, Roy Haynes, Mel Lewis, Danny Richmond, Tootie Heath, etc. But would all the folks I've spoken about today warrant inclusion on a... So you've seen Whiplash and you've heard about Buddy Rich, here are a hundred drummers to check out before you even drop the tone arm on a Buddy Rich record? Absolutely. Anyway, I expect this video will engender a lot of controversy. And look, this is obviously just one man's opinion. Disclaimers again, I do not mean to impugn any of the fantastic fusion drummers that often appear in these lists, and I've got videos about many of them. My main gripe is that in specifically jazz lists, there are jazz drummers who made bigger contributions to jazz who are excluded from those lists because the writers of those lists don't have a deep enough lens into what jazz drummers are actually doing. So they'll see this portion of the iceberg above the water that includes those great fusion drummers. And Buddy somehow just made it to the top of the Google result. Don't ask me. He's a great drummer, kind of a dick, not trying to appear. Anyway, I suspect some of you will agree, a lot of you will disagree. Let me know what you think, leave a comment below the video. And if you'd like something that will improve your jazz drum, since I've used so much content in this video, I'm not allowed to shill a product for you. But what I can do is give you something for free. If you click below the video player right now and enter your email address in on the next page, I'll send you three free videos, my three video mini course, which I assert will make your drumming better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the last six months. And one of those videos is how to really play jazz drums, where I outline an approach that worked for me to finally make my jazz drumming better after tons and tons of the conventional approaches had failed. If you're less thick-headed than I was, you'll probably pick it up right away. Anyway, to get that, it's completely free. Just click below the player and enter your email address in on the next page. Dudes, it's been real. 
A lot of fun writing this one, taking a trip down memory lane, rediscovering all these dramas I love. Catch you next week. Peace.